Brian, thank you so much. So as I mentioned, what a 14 days this has been. And um, this morning, South African time, I did a bit of diving through all the epipads of the events. And I wanted to share some statistics with you on the events. Now, over the last 14 days, we had learners, participants, volunteers from over 24 countries globally, where 16 of these countries came from Africa. So I want to lead read you the list because I do feel it's we have to acknowledge this. We had learners from Kenya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Tunisia, Uganda, Ghana, Morocco, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, Italy, the United States of America, Netherlands, Rwanda, England, Malawi, Ukraine, yes it goes on, India, France, Algeria, Cameroon and Switzerland. This is amazing. We had 23 volunteers, this means instructors, trainers and helpers assisting the organizing committee running these two weeks and our helpers instructors and trainers came from all the corners of the globe from australasia to africa to europe and the us so thank you so much to all of you in the room for making this happen this is amazing but wait there's more right over the last two weeks we have provided more than 300 gigabytes of mobile data to 90 network providers across Africa. And my colleagues in the, at the Carpenter told them I wanted to give mobile data to everyone in Africa. That was, you know, they might have thought, oh, Angelique, I don't know what you're thinking, but we did it. 90 network providers. And South Africa only has five-ish, right? It depends who you are. So all the 14 others went all across the rest of Africa. So that's something I'm very proud of that we could do. So I don't know, wherever you are, give yourself a clap. This is, event has not been possible without your help and your support and you coming to this event, right? I'm seeing 24 individuals in the call today, which is amazing. And many of the faces you see in front of you right now, these were the helpers, the instructors, the learners, the participants. And the event today is a celebration of Carpentry Connect 2021. And today we're going to talk, talk, tell stories in a very African way, stories of how we got involved in the carpentries and how the carpentries have influenced our lives so we can share and learn from each other. So with further ado, without further ado, I would like to present the panelists today who would, I have given them some questions, I'm hoping you have some questions for them. So in true carpentries fashion, I would like them to introduce themselves to you. And I'm going to start on my list in line 60 of the etherpad. Anajiat, over to you. Please just give us a brief introduction. And um, when we're done, we'll commence with the questions. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I feel privileged to be in a very diversified community. So there's, uh, I was every event, every African event that I have attended, in addition to all other events. So people, learners from many different countries, many different cultures. So uh, the things that I have to add up with the people, the excitement, uh, despite of bandwidth difficulties, many other things, and the enthusiasm, uh, it uh, gave me back my, uh, so I was back to high school, the energy, uh, spirit. so I learned a lot, and also I enjoyed uh, teaching, and it's uh, very inspiring. So I got Thank you so much for joining us on the call today. So I'm Anajit, I'm a senior lecturer at School of uh, Data and Sciences at the Black University. I uh, started with the company several years back and it's always exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Apologies, there's a bit of a lag in my internet connection. Thank you so much for always be willing to teach at the Carpentries. Anajit is much appreciated. Next on the list, Jean, over to you. Great, thank you. I'm from the South African Center for Digital Language Resources, and I've been with the Carpentries for, um, I think my first workshop was around about 2015. Um, so it's great also to see how the community has grown on the African continent and South Africa. And the other, it's, it's, it's just really heartwarming. I always feel like, you know, when you see um, everybody together, it feels like you're reuniting with family. So it's a really nice to connect with everybody and see everybody. Um, it's actually quite special. So yeah, happy to be here. Welcome, Jean. Thank you so much for what you also do for the community. 
um, Sally Lad arranges a lot of workshops for South Africa and the rest of the continent. So great to have you on the call. Also from Sally Lad, Masabidi, over to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Masabidi Setaga, and I am from the South African Center for Digital Language Resources. And I am a digital humanities scholar and language researcher at Sadila. Yeah, I've been introduced to the Carpentries in, in 2018. And yeah, I think I've been going on from year to year now. And yeah, I'm Thank part of the organizing committee for the Carpentry Connect South Africa as well. Thank you so Thank much you. for being on the panel today, Masi. Great to have you on the call. Um, next is Sanjay, um, fellow cricket lover. <laughs> Thank you, Angelique. So I am Sanjay Floria. I am from ICFI Business School, Hyderabad, India. I'm a professor in the Operations Management and IT Department. And I've been associated with the Carpentries for the last two years, almost two years now. And each of the workshops that I've been part of, it's amazing how the participants interact and the instructors from all over the globe interact and the kind of helpers that we get, kind of instructors we get. The inspiration that we get out of this and the learning that we get out of this is simply amazing. And um, congratulations, Angelic, for successfully conducting this Carpentries Connect South Africa. I think it's a great initiative and you should keep that up. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. And it's for volunteers like you that it's successful. So we appreciate everything you do for the African Carpentries community. Last but definitely not least, my colleague, Caroline, over to you. Hi everyone, thank you Angelic. All right, um, I'm Caroline Ajiloba. I am a postdoctoral researcher with the Agricultural Research Council here in South Africa. I'm also an extraordinary senior lecturer at the Northwest University Mafiken campus. I started my journey with the cap entries like um, 2016 and it's been awesome. Um, watch the community grow. It were not this much, for example, before, but yeah, seeing us grow and, um, you know, take our position in data science, I think it is awesome. And seeing the volunteer, the enthusiasm, the passion, I think is a very good one. Thank you, Angelique, for putting this together. Only a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing with us and being available today to share your resources with the rest of the community. Um, we have uh, four questions that I've set up front um, ahead, well, I gave, let's say that, to the panelists, and I would like to share that. Please feel free in the etherpad from line 70 to share any questions you might have for us, um, anything about the carpentries, which we can answer and support. We have many of the core team members in the call. We have many instructors and trainers and other volunteers. I'm sure we'll be able to um, support each other with resources if the need arises. The first question I have, and the question I have is for Anajiat, Masabidi, and for Jean. How did you get involved in the Carpentries community? So maybe I can give you a couple of seconds just to get your thoughts together. And Anajiat, if I can, your name is A, my name is A. I usually go first. So can I pick on you? I apologize. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure. So one day I was uh, going through the tweets and I think it was uh, Association for uh, Computing Machinery, ACM tweets. So it was exciting to see something carpentry as well. And uh, some events was going on and uh, there was a carpentry clipping and the name sound very really interesting, carpentry clippings, what's that? So then I subscribed and I kept on, so years went by, I kept receiving newsletters and I see sometimes uh, interesting events coming out. I said, okay. And there are call for volunteers, call for events. So it's like carpentry is a, uh, calling me, come, come, come. So then after getting uh, the newsletters, uh, after, then I applied and said, I was uh, waiting, waiting, waiting. And one day I actually uh, got mind blowing response. I got inside the instructor training and I was mesmerized to see that the trainers were training for two days. I I, I'm a teacher myself. I know they were extremely tired, but they kept smiling and appreciating all the questions. And um, I had the maximum question. I could see that there's so much energy Put into it so so much so i wanted to get something back so that's how i started it's uh, the credit goes to my trainers and all the uh some community support that i have visited this amazing community which looks up for each other and it continually grows takes care of each other's goal 
as well as uh, it goes itself, which is also research backed. So that's an amazing environment. Thank you so much for sharing that energy out. Much appreciated. Masabidi, over to you. Um, so I, like I said, I got involved with the carpentries in 2018 when I started working at Sadila. And it was during that time that um, Jeanne um, introduced us as the team to, 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 to data science. Already was um, teaching us, um, he was teaching us the shell. And I was very afraid of it. I must say in the beginning, the black screen, you know, as a linguist, when you see the something that says computer science, it's it's scary. But anyways, um, we got to we 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 went to the instructor training at the time that was held um here in South Africa. And then that's when now um we got to understand exactly what um the training is all about. And another thing, because um Sadila is a, a, is a digital humanities um focused um, entity, it was in, uh, inevitable for us to actually be learning data science. And um, considering that even uh, with part of our, 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 with part of our mandate being to teach uh, uh, scholars within the South African community with um, modern ways, computational ways of doing things, it was, it served as a platform for us to actually be able to to, to, to know these tools and then also be able to teach them to the broader uh, South African community. So that is just how I got to be introduced to the carpentries. Yeah. Thank you so much, Masi. Um, really appreciate you telling, you know, social scientists, we do not have programming and data analytics curriculum uh, in our program. So that's how I got involved with the carpentry. So thank you for sharing that information with us. Jean, are you ready? Yes, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so I think in my case, it's also kind of a similar example to Mercy. Got involved through somebody who invited me. Um, it was a consultant at our university, Anelda van der Walt, who was uh, focused on um, e-research to get that uh, more uh, rolled out across the university. And that also shows, I think, the importance of sort of actively engaging with the community and really actively recruiting and and getting people involved. And through uh, connections there, I was invited to my first um, workshop that I attended and that was really quite fun. And also after that, went through the instructor training and finally checked out. Also took a while to check out, but yeah, once I checked out and started teaching, it was really fun. And also for Sadler, it's uh, with our mandate also to help uh, improve uh, computational um, usages and methodologies in the humanities in, in South Africa, the carpentry is really, really fit very well because it's really foundational skills. We're teaching um, the material to uh, participants that's very, very new to this. And um, yeah, it's really just very nice to be involved with the community. Thanks, Angelique. Uh, uh, Thank you for sharing with us, John. I remember I was a new instructor in 2017 and John was already trained. So I learned so much from him and Analda and the community. Um, so thank you so much for being part of the panel again. The next question I have is following on the first, and this is for Sanjay and for Caroline. How has joining the Carpentries influenced your life? Sanjay, Hello. can I hand it over uh, to you? you? Okay, okay. Thank you, Angelique. Yeah, so uh, like Anajat, I was introduced to the carpentry through Twitter. So I got some tweets and I applied for that instructor training and it was a wait, waiting period of almost a year before I got the chance to attend that instructor training to full days of training. And it has definitely uh, changed me a lot, changed my teaching. So I have been teaching R and Python to my students. So I teach at a business school. And before that, I used to work for a, a company called Cognizant Technology Solutions, which is a US based IT company. And there also I used to work on R and Python. But when you teach it to someone who doesn't know R or Python, who hasn't worked on it, you need other kind of skills, right? How do you motivate them to learn better? So that is where sharpening of my skills has happened through carpentries. So here you have a mixture of students and you have very uh, senior students, postdoctoral students. And in fact, some professors are also there. 
So uh, I understood new ways of making them understand. So this has definitely helped me in being a better teacher. And I keep learning all the time with, uh, from the co-instructors and from the students. They ask questions. So uh, as you would have also experienced that uh, in every session, there's a new kind of question which I, we need to think about and answer those. So that sharpens our skills. Thank you, Angelique. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Sanjay. Caroline, over to you. All right, thank you, Angelique. Um, so for me, joining the carpentry community has been like joining a family of problem solvers and uh, people who are solution driven. You know, just like um, John mentioned, I got involved also through um, Anelda. So there's a lot of passion in within that community and for me it helped me to i know i'm also a data passionate person before i joined the carpentry but it increased my 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 passion and helped me to also go to the route of sharpening my skills all right so from the community and uh learning i learned more with, uh, on how to use data on how to use I didn't use R before, I didn't work with Python before, but with the carpentries, I learned to use R in some of my analysis. And because I love to teach, I really do love teaching and impacting knowledge. So it, it, it sharpened my skill in trying to teach and impact knowledge, especially when it gets to the trainer's um, workshop. That for me is phenomenal, very good. It has also influenced me positively you know, in creating community. So I, I love to create community while working with the carpentries. It, it, now it just flows. I want to create community. I want people to know what I know and to be able to impact them. And I see that spirit in, in uh, if I use that word, in the carpentries where you, you want to impact, you want others to learn and to gain the same skill and knowledge that you have. And I think at some point it made me to, you know, with the support of other colleagues, we started um, the Arrow Study Group at the Mafiken campus of the Northwest University. And it is still standing, I want to believe, even after I left the place. So uh, the Carpentries has influenced my life in a whole lot of uh, ways. And it, it also helped me to connect with people, you know, different levels of people, professionals, academics, professors, you know, look for an avenue where you've got to teach professors, you know, it's the carpentries are uh, quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, it has influenced my life and also my own um, personal work, my research has also improved uh, with all I've learned and gained from the carpentries. And it, uh, it, when you work with the carpentries, you also learn, you know, to work with a diverse kind of audience. And it helps you to, to you know, your, your, your mind is open, okay? So you have that growth mindset, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, okay, with, with working with the carpentries. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate your input. Um, we all have unique stories and how we join the carpentries as well as how the carpentries has influenced our life. Maybe from my end, I can say in 2017, I became an instructor and um, two and maybe half years later, I'm working for the carpentry. So my, you know, how I got involved and what we're doing now and all of this and how we all join each other's paths is just so unique and how we support each other is amazing. The Carpentries has a um, slogan says you never teach alone and there's not just for technical reasons that but for the support and for the encouragement of fellow instructors. Um, it's so essential. Now moving the conversation a bit on. So in South Africa, for at least I'm not sure for the rest of the world in um, March 2020 COVID hit and we had to transition from in person workshops into online events and I'm seeing a lot of people shake their head and I'm sure this is this was the case in the US this was the case in the Europe in India in Nigeria all over the globe we con, con I would say converted into online and living in the global south we have a very special set of unique challenges we deal with when we teach online events and I would like to reach out to the panel and this is going to be for everyone on the panel so please um, feel free to chime in or we can go down the list however you feel fit. The question is, with the global shift towards online interaction, 
how should we adapt to make sure people in countries um, without reliable internet speed? How can we make sure with a video off? How are we not left behind? What initiatives did you put in place while you are teaching to make sure the message can still be carried over? So maybe I can um, read the question again because I stumbled over my words there, apologies. With a global shift towards online interaction, how should we adapt to make sure people in countries without reliable high speed video internet access are not left behind? I don't know if any of the panelists would like to go first. Should I Sanjay? try, Angelique? Yeah. Go ahead, so, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you, Angelique. So yeah, that's a tough question and that's a policy level question, right? So we have been struggling with that in India since the last one and a half years, as you rightly said. So there are children who haven't gone to school and they didn't have any online education. They don't have phone, forget about phone. They don't have electricity, right? So some initiatives the government has tried and some state governments have also tried. So they are trying to build up centers in villages or maybe two, three villages combined where they have electricity and where they have good bandwidth. And they try to get the students in that location when the classes are going on. And they have distributed free handsets and things like that. Uh, but it's not a very wide ranging thing. Only a few states and a few districts or villages have tried that. So I think uh, that is the only option. Otherwise, if they have internet connectivity and the bandwidth is low, I think putting uh, whatever we teach in writing or uh, sending it them a hard copy or something of the lessons, that could help. I think these are the two only, these are the only two options that I can think of. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us what India is doing currently to beat this challenge, right? I, I think in South Africa, we have load shedding, very similar problems with electricity. Um, some individuals a bit more um, load shedding than other people, but we work around it and we are very resilient in that sense, right? Any other, Caroline, I see you are muted. Yeah. Would you like to chime in? Um, Go ahead. Yes, I, I want to say that um, in my own little way, uh, I have been advocating for more awareness creation about this, about the fact that there is a shift from on-site uh, interactions to online interactions. So that awareness creation for me uh, about th this value, uh, I've been able to do it with uh, a few, you know, multi-stakeholders. Like I partnered with uh, an NGO in one of the countries, and we started taking this forward. So I, at some point, really, we did a, a proposal to code for science and society, okay, so that we could have that um, help on the policy or um, stakeholders who are also in policy, mm -hmm. the post policy leader in the countries to see the importance of, you know, um, working online. All right. So and for them to be able to invest in this area through education and um, institutional system building. So I think if we also go through that route of um, advocacy and awareness creation, it could help you know, uh, increase the impact of government in data science. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caroline. And you raised a very, very important point as well, funding. Um, the data, mobile data we could provide during Carpentry Grenade was funded by Code for Science and Society. Um, I know that um, many different organizations in South Africa running Carpentry's workshops have provided mobile data to individuals to attend. Um, so we're very grateful for this funders and awareness is definitely the way to go. Thank you, Caroline. John, over to you. Uh, thanks, uh, Angelique. Yes, so uh, in terms of that transitioning, um, I remember when it started on the one side, it's sometimes good that you're pressured to deliver on certain things. And from our side, we do need to run workshops and we do need to continue with that. And um, we had to make a plan and make a transition. And what was good again with that, and that's I think true from the carpentries as well, is uh, the carpentries really got together 
um, a lot of different people in the room, a lot of diverse thoughts from different areas to come up with some suggestions in terms of how do you run uh, a workshop online. And that really helped a lot. The resource that was developed um, by the Carpentries to provide guidance uh, really helped us a lot to transition as well. But if I can kind of focus just on a few smaller things um, in terms of the workshops itself, uh, what worked for us was were definitely smaller workshops. We couldn't really get the numbers in, in terms of what you could do in a face-to-face -face workshop, just due to the, the lag in a way. You, you can't help, you don't have helpers that can really connect in the same way uh, that you could do in a face-to-face -face workshop. So for us, smaller workshops work well. We ran also a workshop internally, um, I think first also to, just to get an idea of how does this online thing work? Also to um, give our, um, uh, our colleagues like Marcy and so on an experience how to teach online. So it was a really a little bit more support of the instructors so that they in a way have a safe landing. Um, and I think something that also helped uh, the online environment was really uh, being a bit more structured. So normally um, in a face-to-face -face workshop, your breaks might be a bit more arbitrary, but really what worked for us in South Africa is really kind of this 15-minute work, 10-minute uh, break, 15-minute work, 10-minute break. And that rhythm really helps people to get through the day um, and, uh, you know, through the content without uh, getting too much fatigue on Zoom. But yeah, I think just to summarize, really the materials that was provided by the carpentries to guide uh, the shift to online really helped a lot. Uh, in this 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 environment. Thank you, Jean. Um, I think it's very important to realize Zoom fatigue is real. It really happens, and a cognitive overload will happen if you know you're still focusing on the screen and the material, learning new skills. So taking regular breaks was something that um, when I uh, teach workshops is something I try and incorporate quite often. Any other um, resources, ideas from the panelists? Um, Masi, go yeah, ahead. I think, yeah, John has actually um, mentioned um, a lot of the positives that at least we got. But I must say that um, the online environment was very challenging, and I know that it is not um, it, is not, it is not something that affects an individual, but then it's more of a community thing because now we are stepping into this into this new way of doing things which we were actually not not familiar with. But um, what on Fadila side, um, I think a, there was a point where we now had to do a, a model models, and I think that can actually work for work going forward in terms of countries that do not actually have um, that strong electricity a, a internet internet background to say that if someone was to be cut off and to be missing a class some, or somehow, then they're at, at least able to, able to still go back to the models, able to still go back to, the, to, to whatever that was, that, that was shared. Because I must say that um, a info, a information sharing, um, the right to privacy is something that um, I have seen in a lot, in a lot of workshops uh, being, being promoted. And sometimes you find that you're attending a workshop and, um, the, the instructor would be asking is, is any, everyone comfortable with me um, recording this meeting and most of the times you find that uh, one or two people would be saying that um, they are not um, they are not comfortable with that and the moment there is someone who's not comfortable with with sharing a meeting then it means that obviously um, the instructor cannot just go ahead and uh, and 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 just record the meeting. So I think having a model kind of environment um, would would actually uh, would actually help at the end. But again, maybe one thing that we could also do, um, in provided that we we have funding, you know, um, maybe just a like we bought data, then we buy people those um, a, a routers, maybe just for them to be able to. To, to, to attend the workshop. Although again, I must say, um, Angelique, you can confirm that it's it's quite challenging because how sure are you that I am buying this person data, I'm buying this person a router, and that this person will be coming to the workshop for the entire week? We've had that challenge um, a, a, through, 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 I think throughout the carpentries where we are organizing um, a, a, a workshop at some university and only one person pitches. And, it's quite sad because a lot of funding, a lot of um, a lot of energy went into the preparation and everything. But yeah, I think it's something. Yeah, we can do that and 
see it's a challenge it's a, it's a catch-21 situation thank you thank you Masi. and it is um quite challenging we do live in difficult times and I, we understand individuals not being able to co um, fulfill commitments and workshops however funders might want to know where the money for data went so this is what is the challenge and something we're going to be working on hopefully uh, until we go into in-person events again so if you have any in the room um, wisdoms to share with us please angelique at carpentry.org i would love to hear your input about that and um, we're a community of sharing so please share your wisdom with me anajiat over to you uh, thank you so uh, teaching uh, is uh, my country also faces some of the challenges uh, similar challenges so uh, it was very uh, enlightening and we became more uh, aware of the problems faced by the learners. So uh, in fact, we were amazed that uh, even though it, whether it was due to load shooting or some other engagements, uh, learners had to go away in the middle of the workshop and they did come back did come back and actively tried to catch up. So we had to put the uh, enough learners who will uh, follow up with each of the lessons. And we have gone through a lot of practices for some learners. We had to turn off all the pictures and the videos and turn on the subtitles so that uh, it becomes easier. And for some learners, so we had to move to uh, Google Meet because only Google Meet was probably free, uh, was uh, not charged, but if they use Zoom, it was uh, the mobile data was, uh, the charge was too high for them. And there were a lot more learning. Sometimes we had to use other things and companies have several blogs, uh, which allows us to uh, go through the practices for low bandwidth. In one of the event, I believe, uh, so there were helpers and volunteers who stayed back after the official workshop ended, stayed back several hours, helping each other out, compare notes and uh, the ones, the parts that they have missed. So they helped each other. That was amazing to see. And so I, uh, interestingly, stayed and also tried to help and also saw the energy. The people want to learn and the, uh, they kept trying and not giving up. The strength also inspires me back. So we got some of the uh, things uh, noted. The link is in the uh, Zoom chat. If you like some of the things that we have gathered, uh, how to uh, teach bandwidth in a bandwidth friendly manner. Uh, and also we try to minimize the screen and only share a very small specific part of the screen so that the, uh, the audio doesn't drop much. And we also talk a bit slow and repeat, repeat, repeat several times so that um, even it could be accent as well. So we have a various, a various level of so, uh, English background, so that helps with the accent as well. And sometimes I find some of my colleagues also translating some of the things, uh, say trying to say in French or some other languages, so trying uh, to help uh, learners learn. So uh, those who would like to review, the link is in the Zoom chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anajat. And you raised a very important um, point there is make accessibility accessibility to if you have had one screen accessibility to not speaking your mother tongue and i would like to um well showcase something of the carpentries now it's called glossario glossario is a multilingual online dictionary which is translated by volunteers in our community if you open it up there you can see six african language just i'm seeing bangla as well i'm seeing korean i'm seeing dutch i am seeing Amharic. Arabic as well. We are looking for volunteers to help us translate English data science terms into your mother tongue. If you are thinking this is something right up your alley, again, send us an email at angelic at carpentries.org. I will definitely steer you in the right direction. Thank you for that, Anajiat. Um, many of the room have helped out with the Sitswana, Afrikaans, um, um, Swahili translations. Please, we need to translate this to make it easier for our learners in the classroom. Again, thank you for those of you who already done so. It's amazing. Please have a look at the link I shared in the chat. You can see what this multilingual glossary is all about. I kind of took the sidelined the discussion of it. Energy had made me think of something. Um, setting up your screen, very important resource. Not all of us have a second screen. How to make sure you can see a software package as well as a Zoom screen um, is very important as well. 
Jean already alluded to taking regular breaks. I want to transition our question into what resources can you share to us in the room today for successfully teaching online workshops? Is there anything we have not mentioned yet that you just thought about and um, would like to share with the rest of the community? I'm putting you on the spot. I know, I apologize. The motivation is one of the strongest key. Uh, sorry, Kim, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yes, please. <laughs> no, I, I had a, a suggestion with teaching um, on, in online that, that seemed to amuse people when I suggested it. Um, there's a concept in psychological experiments of a stooge, which is someone who's actually colluding with the, the researcher. They're, they're, nobody else knows it, but they're actually not just a normal participant. They're working with the researcher. So I was thinking it might be useful to have a stooge in the classroom whose uh, job it is, is to put their hand up a lot and ask lots of silly questions early on so that everybody else who's attending gets the norm of, okay, it's fine to interrupt and ask questions when I'm not sure about what's going on. Thank you, Kim. Interruption and asking a lot of questions is definitely key to online. Anajat, you also had a statement? Yep. So uh, one of the amazing things I've seen in the workshop, as well as the uh, training sessions, is uh, they put a lot of effort in the icebreaker in the beginning and make sure the environment is good enough and flexible enough so they share stories. I would say, like, uh, they sometimes say, okay, so when we're in a uh, learning environment and look left and look right, and why doesn't somebody else ask the same question that I have so that I don't have to ask him? So, so making sure that so people can relate to that, oh, I, I have a question I could ask. So, and again, I can repeatedly encourage that, okay, so there is nothing like a silly question, feel free to ask, feel free to interrupt, ask anytime, if uh, maybe this is being recorded or not. But if you don't um, feel like unmuting, feel free to write in the Zoom chat or in the Etherpad. So anything we're comfortable. So anyhow, or if you'd like to help us share your screen right away, so we'll be happy to troubleshoot. And even if say, okay, I understood nothing, uh, I need to start over. So our helpers are standing by to help you even from the scratch. So those things are the assurances that like, we are there to help and we are excited. And the importance uh, that another thing that I to highlight the importance of making the mistake. This is ex explicitly emphasized during the demonstration session of the, during instructor training. Uh, so the ability to make when we make mistakes, the learners can connect to us. Oh, this is why you make mistakes. It's a peer environment, not somebody a highly experienced. So I cannot be like that, not like that. So it's so like a, so we are all peers learning together. Everybody can make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to share the mistake that we have done. So that's uh, creating that environment and the energy flow of the flowing all around. That's the thing that we need to do. I think one more thing, Angelique, if I may. One more thing that I have found during carpentry session, other sessions. So if you give them a lot of uh, simple exercises, so the participants are given simple exercises, which they are able to solve and you encourage them. So uh, like wonderful, what a solution. You gave a very good solution then the engagement level goes up. And this I have seen in the in-person classrooms as well as in the carpentry online mode. So the number of exercises could be increased. We do have a lot of exercises, but some of them are a bit complicated where you have to look at the answers and then solve it. So if they can solve on their own, that could increase the engagement level. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think a part of instructor training, we teach new instructors that in the first 15 minutes of a new lesson, you must learn a skill that you can apply immediately. And that ties into energy, I'd said, building that motivation, that confidence in, oh, I can now assign a value to a character in R. And this is like magic in a sense, right? And this encourages and motivates learners in our classroom. Any other instructor or in the panelist would like to chime in to techniques you use in teaching online? Perhaps I can uh, give a leading question. In in-person events, we use sticky notes, right? Sticky notes, red, pink, orange, yellow, and we use them for various things, right? but we use them to indicate when I'm done with an activity. We use them to indicate, hello, I need help. How did you transition from in-person sticky notes into the virtual environment to kind of transfer that um, 
pedagogy of the carpentries in a sense. I don't know if um, I know how I do it, but I don't want to immediately share how I transitioned that. Any of the panelists would like to share how you incorporated a virtual feedback, virtual sticky notes into online teaching? Caroline? Yeah, um, thank you, Angelic. All right, so I think um, I did that in, I think, two different possible ways. So like the last um, workshop I took last week, I found out that using the yes, no was more comfortable with the participants. So um, can you give me a yes? Can you give me a no? So I get all the yeses. I see yes, 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 okay. And then a few no's, all right. Um, I, I used that one. Then we also use um, Jamboard to get um, feedback also at the, end of, at the end of each session. So we have the Jamboard, which is online and um, we put the pink stickies there. We have the green stickies and it's anonymous so um, participants can put their, um, you know, what you think is okay, it should be continued. They put on the green sticky there and what they think, oh, they, the instructor should improve upon, they put there on the, the pink sticky. So I used the yes, no, yes, no um, for the, um, you know, within, when, during the training. And you see on the reaction, you also have other reactions also. You have the red, um, sorry, you have the tick, which is the green tick, you also have the um, star that is red. So they could also use that uh, then, uh, that is within the teaching or within the workshop. But after each session, the Jamboard was then used for, uh, you know, the, the comment from the, the participants. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I was trying to um, show you on the screen in uh, Zoom how we use them. It's, it's a very nice tool. It summarizes who's finished with an activity by the green um, dot or the red dot. And that allows you to um, just check in on a type of assessment with your learners. All right, we've, um, uh, Anajat, go ahead. Uh, just a quick one, because uh, we are catering towards a very diverse audience and the Zoom version gets uh, deployed in different regions at different times. So all the, uh, everyone's Zoom features were not same. Uh, that you didn't find all the reactions in the same place or maybe not the same reactions. So what we ended up doing is respond in the Zoom chat. So write uh, why for this, uh, yeah, why for yes, and for no, and those things. And uh, so, and so, or in, in or even uh, respond in the ether bat, like plus sign for to vote for something. So those things really helped and it was either also in a bandwidth friendly way. And when people kept seeing uh, some response in the Zoom chat, it's a ping, 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 or the, uh, the counter going up, that because if everybody is responding, yes, maybe I should too. Okay, so that also is an encouragement and reminder that also goes on. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, something I have not thought about, um, Zoom updates might be rolled out differently globally. And it is a very bandwidth friendly manner, um, yes and no and plus and minuses. And it does motivate individuals to participate, right? In a low bandwidth way. We have less than 15 minutes left in the session, and I want to move on to the questions that we have for the panelists. Um, the first question, I think we answered some of them already, but any thoughts on where the material, I'm assuming this is about carpentry's material, might be extended in the future beyond the lessons or what we currently offer. Now, before I open this question to anyone in the room, uh, and particularly to my core team colleagues, um, who knows more about the curriculum development, I would like to share the incubator link with you in the chat. The incubator is a spot, and I know Anna Jiat knows a lot about the incubator too. Um, it's a spot where new lessons live and develop and how they mentored and incubated in a sense. So if you're looking to see what else we are doing at the Carpentries and what's been developed, this is a great spot to start to look at in. Um, I know many of us in the room might be involved in thinking of oh this um, discipline maybe for history this data carpentry lesson will be great for history or for psychology etc so please have a look there if you have any questions you can reach out to team at carpentries.org i am not 100 percent sure which lessons are currently um, being rolled out or being focused on. I am aware that the social science lesson in data carpentry is uh, receiving a lot of attention in South Africa. 
for that matter. So a lot of work's going to go into that. I do know a lot is happening in the incubator. I know that Anajiat is working on a foundational um, computer skills program, and I want to put you on the spot there. Um, I know you spoke a lot today. Would you maybe share with us uh, one or two sentences on what you are currently working on or envisioning for this program? Thank you for highlighting the lessons. So we could also uh, get help for, from, so the incubator lessons could help uh, use some help from the community as well. So here we were uh, thinking about many of us uh, uh, have uh, might face some challenges because uh, when we it comes to some software setup, some settings, some customizations, or some even uh, putting data in the right places, uh, the experiences uh, lead to many different expectations and experiences. So if we have come from certain background, something that is trivial for somebody else who have seen uh, people all around them are doing certain things, it becomes easier for them. So the support and the exposure that makes a lot of difference. So now as we are a global community and all of our, uh, we have diff many different experiences, the lesson uh, tries to make those things explicitly listed and the skills that we need to uh, set up, uh, download and install certain softwares, how to configure certain things, uh, and things uh, might vary because some of us might be using something called say OneDrive and when you install OneDrive, the desktop location changes and that blows away all the expectations, all the guidelines that we have in many of the lessons because uh, the desktop has moved so many of the things don't work anymore. So how do we uh, work around, adapt uh, in, from different scenarios? Some of us might be working with some tablets which might not have exact same environment like the desktop. So that foundational uh, computing skills tries to deal with that. So we are uh, still in the uh, very early stage of uh, thinking about the ideas and going on. And if, uh, if I have to perfect things, I have seen, I have seen a lot of enthusiasm uh, growing in, uh, in African countries about quantum computing. So I'm sort of, uh, sort of envisioning that so we, are, we might have a quantum computing lesson and related things uh, in the future. That's my uh, this wild uh, prediction. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, it's very exciting. So if you want to look out for other things happening in the carpentries and lessons, please um, visit the links myself and Anajat shared in the chat. Um, I am looking forward to what's going to happen in the future. To round off today, we have 10 minutes left. The uh, second question in the, well, one of the questions, the second I would like to ask from you in the room is, do you have any advice for new Carpentries members? I'm going to open up to the panel. What advice do you have for new Carpentries members? John, go ahead. I would say do look, go to the special sessions, attend meetings, and just look around and see what's what. Um, because I'm quite sure at some point you're going to hear something that really triggers your imagination or your interest, because there's so many different areas where you can get involved by actively working, let's say, on the lessons itself, as well as maintaining or becoming involved in certain parts of the community um, or instructing or hosting or, you know, just mentoring. Um, or just be part of the discussion session. So I can really recommend just be part of the community, come in, it's very welcoming. You don't always need to say any, anything at the start and, uh, and that way you will systematically get into, into the fold. So just lurk uh, for a start. Thank you so much, John. I shared links for you to the community discussion sessions as well as the African Carpentries community calls if you were like, interested to in joining us. Masabidi. Uh, do you want to say uh, something? Oh, yes. I must say that um, during the, the community engagement, actually, there's so much to learn. I remember the other time, um, Angelique was actually teaching us uh, uh, how to use GitHub. Like, I had never actually um, uh, went on to now um, making a website. But now, it, it's through those engagements that you're actually able to see what's possible and what's not i mean people from all over the world would be coming and sharing their knowledge sharing their their resources as well to say that if we, we are not able to use this kind of resource but which other resource can be can we be able to use and that is where now you get to learn a lot number two i think um practice 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 meaning that 
the more you you teach the more you gain your confidence uh, 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 with number one either being in front of students or most importantly being being on the being on the online environment because i think we are all aware that uh, teaching online can be quite um emotional because now you are not sure if the people that you are actually teaching do they understand what you are saying sometimes you ask the question no one is answering and it, it it's kind of um it's a tricky uh, one to play around but i think the more you practice the more you understand um how the online environment works the more you understand that okay it's fine they might not have an answer now but okay maybe let me try and find um another way of asking this question maybe someone will actually answer and yeah just trying to understand the, the, the whole landscape thank you thank you so much for sharing your wisdoms um much appreciated Massey. caroline over to you all right um thank you angelic all right so i want to say that for new instructors or would be instructors that uh, within the carpentries community there is a lot to learn so we can come in with a, a, an open mindset to, to learn, uh, but there's also opportunity to be mentored and also to become a mentor yourself. So it's, it's a big field where you can learn and you can also teach others. So you don't think that there's nothing any other person cannot learn from me. So because in, in, as we teach, as we teach in workshop, we learn from the learners and the learners also learn from us. So for an instructor coming up fresh, you have opportunity to mentor others, you have opportunity to be mentored. Then don't be scared, okay? Don't be scared because there is help all around within the carpentries community, you've got help. And it's something that we've got to learn that we can always ask for help. You can always ask for help within a workshop, outside of the workshop, you can always connect with somebody out there. Okay, I'm running this project, is there any way you can help or you can link me to somebody that can help me. So we, we get to have that. And I see you posted a few other things. So there are several links where you don't even have to struggle to know what to do. So you, you the, the, the carpentries are simplified a whole lot of things that if you're having an issue on organizing a workshop, whatever it is, you find something to help you right there. Uh, uh, you know, on the internet or within the Carpentries um, um, website, or you just connect with any other instructor. So you've got the different communities. So make use of the communities, make use of it, um, different communities where you can, you can um, access help, you can be helped. And like I said, uh, it's open, you can mentor somebody, you'll be very surprised that Ooh, that comment you made is going to be a help for some other person. And I also find out that within the community, you get, if you have your mind open, which I would encourage, you'll be able to think outside of the box. Like you want to organize a project for yourself or something, which is not even within the carpentries. You see that, uh, or you think is not within the carpentries. You find that if you get to the carpentry, there are people who want to work on ideas like that and they can help you to grow. Your, your idea. They might not even, it, it wouldn't cost them to, to contribute to whatever you're doing to, because you're part of the community. So I think it's a good one that um, your mind is open and you're ready to learn and also, um, you know, give what you have at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caroline. And thank you for sharing all the resources in the chat and chat for all the um, mailing lists as well as community discussion events and the African Carpentries Meetup Monthly. Before we round up, I want to give the opportunity for anyone else on the panel to share any wisdoms to new Carpentries members. We have three minutes. Anajad, go ahead. Yep, thank you. So uh, do not get disheartened in any opportunity, in any application. I have been rejected so many times in instructor training and in many applications. I have kept, kept trying. Uh, so uh, whenever I got some opportunities, I didn't have to look back. So in, my phone instructors were very supportive, the helpers. In fact, I can remember almost uh, most of the people in this room, I got help in many different ways. They supported me in different applications, in teaching, in helping, in community discussions. I have spent hours uh, sitting in community discussions, getting tips from the experienced ones. I remember Harry is laughing and Harry was laughing exactly in the same way in the community discussion video. 
So I got super excited from that, the community discussion onboarding. So we get help from everybody. So help is all around us. We just have to look, but we just have to try. We don't have to be an expert, just like Caroline said. We don't have to be an expert. That the, the community support is the greatest, and we have mentorship available, uh, both formal and informal mentorships. It's all around us just being in the step in, take the first step. You'll be surrounded by a new set of friends that you didn't realize you had. Thank you. Wow, thank you for sharing. What a way to close this amazing 14 days. I promised you a celebration and it definitely was this discussion. So thank you to all the panelists in the room, Jean, Massey, Caroline, Anajat, Sanjay, um, much appreciated. Thank you for the questions you put in the chat. I would like to thank my organizing committee, also Massey, Martin, Sebastian and Sarah Without your help and your support this last two weeks, this would not have been the success it was. Oh, Martin, I see you have, oh, fancy pants, virtual background, right? Um, for the core team members attending, those of you who are still sleeping at the moment in the US, I want to thank them for all their support. The funding of Code for Science and Society, this event could not have been possible. And what we could have done um, with mobile data would not be possible without their support. We are hoping to make this a biannual event, alternating with Carpentry Come once um, we can have in-person. Hopefully this is something we can look into having an in-person Carpentry Connect in the continent. Before we leave, the Carpentries loves feedback. We want to hear from you about how you experienced week two of Carpentry Connect so we can make this even a better experience next time around. So I'm sharing in the chat a link, please. It takes three minutes. We would love to hear what you thought about week two. I also shared the link in line 29 of the etherpad if you want to revisit um, uh, the link in the future. Thank you again. I, I can't believe after how many months of training and working and planning, this has been such a huge success. Thank you for everyone in this room for making it what it was this last two weeks. I officially call this um, event cannot, closed. Not yet, not yet. Okay, I'm, I'm, Carrie, go ahead. I'm yeah. exerting my executive director hat. <laughs> Some of you have already expressed your gratitude uh, for Angelique in the chat, but I want to verbally congratulate you, Angelique, on your first Carpentry Connect. Angelique wrote this grant all by herself. And she has truly put together an amazing event with the organizing committee. Thank you so much for your leadership and your advocacy for Africa, for South Africa, for the global South in general. We appreciate you so much, Angelique. Congratulations. So everyone, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Angelique. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you so much, Gary. Um, I actually went, um, I am tearing up at the moment, not just because of my allergies, but both of your kind words. Um, this has been an honor to organize this event for the continent. And I cannot wait for the next one, honestly. Right, everyone have a lovely day. Stay safe and Thank stay you, healthy. Angelique. Thank, Thank you, Angelique. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>